Hello, hello, good morning, good morning, or uh, afternoon on the East Coast. West Coast is the best coast. Hello, what? hello, good morning, good morning, or oh. uh, afternoon on the East Coast. We got a little feedback there. Sorry about that. All right, let's get started. It's our first daily podcast for Two Strike Noise, baseball history podcast. If you don't know, you can get us wherever you get podcasts. But uh, here, we are just going to be doing some dailies. It's wherever you get podcasts. Oh my right. God, stop with that. Uh, we're just going to be doing some dailies. Uh, and looking at the game last night. Who watched the game last night? I'm guessing if you're watching this, you probably did. What a freaking performance by the Dodgers pitching staff. I, I'm i trying to think of a World Series game since like, what was it, Game 7 of 1990, was it 91? The Braves and the, and the Twins? Jack Morris versus John Smoltz. I mean, last night was freaking incredible. That was a fun game to watch. If you're, I guess if you're, unless you're a Yankees fan. I, I think the John Boy broadcast got like their highest number of views after the game was over because everyone wanted to see their reaction. The Yankee hate is great. I, I mean, the, the Dodger hate needs to be had as well, but... Uh, yeah, what a game. I mean, it was fun to watch. For someone that likes offense, I love a pitching duel either. This was kind of a one-sided pitching duel. Of course, the who hit the home run in the ninth? Was it Riz? Or it was Verdugo. Uh, made it look closer than it was with that two-run shot. I think it was with two outs in the ninth, wasn't it? Yeah, two outs in the ninth. So, score looks a little bit closer than it was. But, man, the dot Walker Bueller earned himself some cash last night i mean he is gonna for somebody that had an off season he's gonna make a lot of money uh with that but uh geez yeah that was uh that was actually pretty fun to watch how long did that take three hours and 25 minutes what's up with that baseball i mean granted a couple of years ago that this game would have probably taken four hours but why there were there were only ten hits total. How did how did this game take so long? Where are those speed up rules? But um, wow, I mean the Dodgers didn't do a whole lot either. They had five uh, five hits as well, but they had the uh, of course the the two out home run in the first inning by Freddie Freeman, who you can just give him the trophy already. I mean, assuming assuming the Dodgers don't lose the next four in a row, Freddie Freeman is going to be your World Series MVP. Guy is incredible. Uh, Kurt Gibson 2.0, only better. But uh, let's see, what else? Bueller went five innings, two hits, five Ks. Uh, that's great. And then this bullpen was so dominant. Nobody, I mean, when Kopech came in in the ninth and, again, Gave up the two-run shot to Verdugo. No one cares about that. Didn't didn't mean anything. Uh, that was just a dominant performance. That was fun to watch. Uh, let's see, Schmidt two and a th- two and two thirds, two hits, three. <laughs> I mean, if this was the regular season game, he probably ends up going four or five innings and probably doesn't give up anymore. Maybe another run or two. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I like the postseason. The games are crazy, but the number of pitchers used, that must be why it took so long, because each team used like 17 pitchers. But that was uh, that was a fun game. It could be over tonight. Baseball season could be over by this time tomorrow. I, I think, I don't know. I kind of, I, th- I think the, Do- I thought the Dodgers were going to be able to beat the Yankees. I mean, they're the best team in the regular season, and they certainly look it now. They didn't look it so much against the Mets, but, geez, uh, that was uh, that was quite a <laughs> quite a shellacking. Uh, let's see. I don't even know who's going tonight. Let's uh, let's do this. Let's look at a little baseball savant action here and see. So here's the box score from last night. We don't care about that. Let's go here. Look at a little baseball savant action from last night. Top exit velocity, all Dodgers, except for Giancarlo Stanton. Who would probably be the, the MVP if the Yankees won, if they were up three to nothing? Uh, distances, doesn't matter. Pitch velocity, all of that coming out of the bullpen, a couple of hundos. 
Swings and misses. Wow, Walker Buehler had nine swings and misses. Kopech had three, though, in that one inning. Ground out. Home run. Exit Velo was 100.5. One that would have been out of four ballparks in all of Major League Baseball. Uh, and Freddy's would have been out in 20. So his wasn't a cheapie. But, wow. That was, I, I mean, that was just such a blowout. I, I was watching with my wife, and she was even like, this isn't even close. And I, this is what they all, except for that game one, which was a classic. No, not even close. All right, that's enough. There's not a whole lot to talk about. I'm not here to dissect games. That's not what we're going to do here on this stream. We are going to do some baseball weeklies, or baseball weeklies, baseball dailies. I've got some video I want to watch just prepping to do the podcast this week. Um, first thing we're going to do is Connection Sports Edition. This is a New York Times thing in uh, conjunction with The Athletic. It's connections, but it's sports related. So sometimes it's baseball. Sometimes it's not. I see the word Rockies and Jays in here and Brewers so and Padres and Rays. So there's going to be something to do with baseball here. Now, you're supposed to get four things here in a group together. Now, I see heat here. So this might be Florida stuff. Um, what did I say? I guess I didn't say Marlon. So, so it's not Florida stuff. Disregard that. Uh, let's see. Of the baseball teams here, we've got Padres, we've got Brewers, Rockies, Jays, and Rays. So it's not going to be just a straightforward baseball thing. Um, let's see here. There's some hockey teams, Jackets, and Devils, but that is it. And that's New Jersey and Columbus. Hmm. All right. Let's see what else we've got. We've got Race. We've got Sock, Wallop, Smash, and Belt. So I'm going to guess those are going to be paired together. Synonyms for hit. So now you see how it works if you didn't before. Uh, let's see. Heat, Rays, Rockies, Jays, Devils, Brewers. Uh, the Rays, Rockies, and Jays were expansion teams, as were the Brewers and the Padres. Um, hmm. New Jersey Devils. Wow, here we go. Heat, Relay, Dash, and Race. I think those are all different, different ways of racing. All right, running events. All right, so we've got Devils, Line, Brewers, Jackets, Rays, Jays, Rockies, Padres. So something to do with baseball here. It's not location-wise. <sighs> um, they're not fish. They're not birds. <laughs> Boy, this is what is Line got to do here with? I mean, Jackets. If that's the Blue Jackets, the hockey line, but we don't have anything else to do with hockey except for Devils. If we have got... Um, Brewers, Jays, Rockies, Padres. Jeez, this is, these are usually not this difficult. Uh, Padres... Second. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, Rockies, Rays, Devils, Padres. God, I'm kind of at a loss here. Let's do these because these... I, the Brewers were an expansion team, or no? The Brewers were not an expansion team. They're the pi the uh, the pilots. No, one away. Hmm. San Diego, Tampa, Milwaukee, Columbus. 
it's oh oh blue we're gonna put blues in front of these right blue jays blue jackets maybe not <laughs> i am feeling like an idiot here New Jersey. San, I, okay, I'm I'm at a complete loss. I did this, and it said one away. So one of these is wrong. Um, let's take away. Well, so that would also mean that these. Three of these are correct. I am feeling... I put in the title the idiot stream stuff, and this is definitely what it is. Uh, chat screaming at me. I'm not going to look. Devil's Brewers. Um, ba -ba -ba. We're going to remove Padres and put jackets for no reason whatsoever. Nope. And it didn't say one away. So Padres is definitely in there. Um, so let's see. San Diego, Columbus, New Jersey, Tampa, Toronto, Colorado. Um... That's what I just did, and that was not it. I was thinking these were the latest expansion teams listed. I don't know what line is in this respect. Um, all right, we're just going to put Brewers. We're just going to try and end it here. <laughs> um, all right, we're going to just do this. I, I, this is a fail big time teams to never win a world series blue i had that right blue devils blue jackets blue J blue line i was just thinking team names that is a huge fail oh my god that's embarrassing that's the way things are going to go here though all right, before we get into some uh, other dailies here i found some video here this is from a youtube channel called critical past uh, historical footage. This is Chicago White Sox Cleveland Indians game. Uh, does not tell me. 1959. All right, so this is just going to be footage. This is not. In Cleveland's Lakefront Stadium, the wow. moment of truth. Look at that. I mean, yeah, a little troublesome uh, today, that big logo, but that is pretty cool. It's some manual upcoming games is pretty cool. And I'm assuming that's opponent and maybe a promotion. 1959, though, they were playing at the Jake by the Lake. The the American State by the Lake. Race. The second ranking Indians face the White Sox, who will clinch the play if they win. Wow. The, okay, now this looks like Oakland. Look at this. Look at all this foul territory. Can you see? Yeah, you can see my mouse. Look at that. That's nuts. And their first to score. Louis Aparicio's double sends Bubba Phillips across. Wait, what? <laughs> Look at this. The fence is like some... The fight for the third inning icebreaker. Temporary crowd control fence. Ooh, good side. No, not even. Oh my God! Look at that! Look at the freaking camera guys. They're just chilling here. What if the ball got away from him? These guys are just like, oh yeah. I guess they didn't have telephoto lenses, so. Billy Goodman wraps out another two bagger to drive in Aparicio and give the pennant hungry pale hose a two run lead. Rosie outlook for Chicago manager Al Lopez until in the ninth inning 
Cleveland loads the bases on three singles. There's only one out. Time for the White Sox ace troubleshooter. AKA closer? Pitcher Jerry Staley is sent to the mound by Lopez. The Sox first pennant in 40 years hangs from the balance. One pitch ends the suspense. Sharp fielding and the Sox turn it nice into a double play. play. The White Sox dance off the field with a 4-2 victory and the pennant in the bag. Their first championship since 1919. It's joyful pandemonium. I'm sure they'll go on to win the World Series. The White Sox, they're known for winning World Series. earlier as a no-hit club. The White Sox came a long way for this celebration. Wow. Dancing with a little hat on like that. All right. Uh, let's see here. This one is from, uh, this is a, a quick one. Well, if you could not start again, please, that would be great. Uh, let's see. This one is "They Call It Baseball," reported by an American commentator. So this is a this was for British, I guess. Like, a, what do they call them when you watch the news reels before movies in the movie theaters at that point? From nineteen forty three. Angeles at Wrigley Field, Linda Darnell and 20,000 fans, movie and baseball. Linda Darnell. The world's wackiest series. Edgar Kennedy helps Veronica Lake and Deanna Durbin choose sides. Uh, it's all in fun, and it's all for And the game's over. Hospital. That was it. Just the band on the field. Oh, what is this? This is like barnstorming. Into the pitcher's box. Well, who cares? Okay, yeah. This <laughs> hits, the Brooklyn's are in. So this is for British people. They're like, yeah, this is baseball. Hour makes up for the annual comedians versus leading men's baseball catastrophe, and he can't be hurried. Okay. He must be a comedian. He ain't no ball player. <laughs> well, that's what happens when you mix ham with baseball. That's great because I I need to bookmark that because I have written down for future uh, podcast topics is this uh, leading man versus comedians game which apparently happened every year for a while very interesting also the Russians meet Monty I don't know who Monty is all right next one here we go uh, this is a new game this is called. Uh, well, it's not called MLB walk-off, but it's walk-off where they give you these four columns and then they give you three names. You've got to put the names in the right columns. Some names can go in more than one column, so you need to make sure you get them in the one that's meant to be. I am doing the athletics because that is my team. Uh, it will be easiest for me. Does not mean I'll solve it as we saw with the uh, connections game just a couple minutes ago. So uh, our category is 2010's top five hits, 2023 top five walks, seven plus seasons with Oakland, and mainly played third base. So let's do this mainly played third base first. None of these guys mainly played thir uh, third base. So uh, Zito can go over here to seven seasons with Oakland. Uh, Giambi can go seven seasons with Oakland, and Xavi can go seven seasons. Um, Mark Ellis might be able to fit there as well. And, oh, well, Xavi played third. So, all right. So I'm confident in this. Uh, Xavi played third. Jack Hanahan played third. And... God, who? nobody else played... I mean, Semyon played some... Jace, I thought Jace Peterson was an outfielder because Noda is a first baseman. Crisp is an outfielder. Reddick's an outfielder. Rook's an outfielder. And Simeon, I mean, I guess Adam Kennedy is going to be there. I don't even remember Adam Kennedy on the A's, but regardless, uh, there we go. All right. Uh, 2010. Well, Ryan Noda wasn't on the team. Reddick was. Crisp there. Um, 2023 top five walks. Well, Simeon wasn't on the team. I mean, that's got to be it. 
How could he have had the top five walks in 2023 when he wasn't on the team for very long? Um, wow, I, I don't know who else would be there. 2023 top five walks. All right, so let's take a swing here. Looks like we got it right. Yay! Walk off. First pitch. Freddie Freeman. All right, so let's just do this with the random other team. Let's do uh, let's do the Mariners just because I know the Mariners well, having lived there, worked there. So uh, same categories here. So let's go ahead and do the third base and the seven seasons with those are probably easiest. Uh, Dustin Ackley was a second baseman, so I'm going to put him over here. Nelson Cruz was in 2023, I'm guessing. No. Nelly was in the 2010s. Um, Crawford would be here. Seven seasons with, uh, we'll put Suzuki. I don't think Adrian Beltre, only, he only played there for a year, didn't he? Or something like that. Um, Mike Moore is a pitcher, so he would probably be the seven seasons. Uh, Ty France would definitely be in the walks in 2023. Mainly played third base, Beltre. I, actually, I think Cabrera might be there. And then seven seasons. I don't know, did A-Rod? I don't think A-Rod played seven seasons. Um, all right, so top five hits. For the Mariners through the 2010s, we've got A-Rod, Dustin Ackley, which doesn't seem right, and Nelson Cruz. Uh, top five walks last year. Those guys, I'm feeling good. Those are the only guys that are still on the team from last year. So that one's good. Seven seasons. Oh, Ichiro's got to be over here, doesn't he? Um, do we do that? I don't think Ackley, Ackley didn't even play seven seasons in the big leagues, but he didn't play third. He was a second baseman and then went to the outfield and he was, only, he could only be, um, and Nelly didn't play for seven years with the Mariners. Well, I'm kind of kind of stuck here. I feel good with this, even though Cabrera, I'm not. Like, does this mean with the Mariners? Because otherwise I could put A-Rod over here. But who would I put over here? Let's just do this. And we're playing in pro mode, so it's not going to tell us which ones we have right and wrong. So let's swing. All right, we've got two right here and two right here. So these two are pitchers, so it's got to be Ackley. So let's do that because Ichiro is with them. Nope. But it still says I have two right. Um, Ackley can't be right. But it's got to be... Ackley couldn't have the top five hits in the 2010s. He just, he was only there for like a couple of years. And this is not right. All right, so this is what we're going to do because I don't know the Mariners that well. Let's go ahead and do this. This will tell us Ackley and A-Rod. So A-Rod did, how in the world does Dustin Ackley have that? Let's. Do a quick check here. Dustin Ackley. He, he he only he only played for the Mariners for five years, and he had four hundred and eighty eight hits for the Mariners. Wow. I mean, he came up as a rookie, and everyone was excited, and then the next. 
couple of seasons. Wow, he actually, I don't remember him having that good. I just remember this. I remember the struggle. <laughs> All right, so that's how we play it. That's a new game. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, I didn't see who it was sponsored by today. They usually tell you it's sponsored by somebody. Today it is uh, sponsored by the worst baseball page. Some would consider that our podcast. All right. Uh, next uh, and final daily for today. These are short streams, only like an hour or so. Um, try to keep it around that. I get to get ready for the pod and do some other things today. So we're just going to do the grid. First rule of the grid is if Ricky Henderson can be used in a square, he must be used at some point. Uh, I can see here that he can be used in two squares today. Uh, we try to get a low score, but we also try to be on brand with the podcast, which means we want pop culture more than we want um, anything else. So, uh, well, and we have our favorite players. So, uh, using Ricky Henderson here, I'm going to say more people remember him with the Red Sox than they do the Angels. So, I'm going to put Ricky in the center square, please, for 3%. All right, I do not like word ones. I'm not as good with those, so maybe we'll try and knock those out. Um, played second base for one game for the Expos or the Nationals. So I think Tim Raines is going to... I just know he played second base, and it had to have been with the Expos. Uh, and the only reason I know that is because his card in MLB The Show has second base listed as a secondary position. So use that there. Uh, played second base for the Dodgers. I think Jackie's going to be the number one answer there. Or they'll probably, or Mookie Betts. Because uh, I, I try to use people from the 80s, 90s, maybe uh, 2000s if possible. Um, well, I, that's an easy one, actually. He is... The only player to appear on both The Simpsons and Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Had a little bit of a throwing problem uh, from second base to first, which I can relate to. Uh, but I didn't have the yips. Uh, I just have a bad arm. Uh, Mr. Steve Sack. Oh, 15%. I thought that would be quite a bit lower. Uh, second base in a 300 average season. I mean, this one's pretty wide open. Uh, let's take a second baseman. Uh, let's see. For I, I de by default go to the A's, and I'm not going to put Mike Gallego. I don't think he ever hit 300. You you pay me like Mike Gallego, I'm going to play like Mike Gallego. Ricky Anderson famously said. Uh, let's see. How about we could do like Roberto Alomar, but we try to avoid him because the whole spitting incident. Um. Uh, da, da, da. what about no? Um, just trying to think of some some older guys like Ernie Banks was a shortstop. Uh, Pete Rose did he he had to have played second at some. Watch this. Also on the Simpsons. The last left-handed second baseman to take the field. 0.5%. That's a good one right there. We did we did done good. We did done good there. All right. Uh, let's see here. Let's avoid the 300. We'll do that last. I feel like that's going to be my weakest. Uh, so let's finish up the Angels. Angels and Expos or Nationals. This one might be a tough one for me. Um, second baseman that played, uh, and, and I tend to think of the Expos more than the Nats. Um, like what you had Fernando, not Fernando Vina. Um, oh shoot. What was his name? I'm not going to remember it. Um, Dick Schofield. How about that? Name I haven't said for a while. Um, geez, we're going to have to come back. Let's do the Red Sox. Maybe that'll be a little bit easier. Uh, Jose Vidro, I think, played for both of those teams. Um, 
So let's see. Pedro is probably the best answer here. Hall of Famer Pedro Martinez. Um. Oh, did Jeff Reardon pitch for the Twins and the Expos, didn't he? We're going to go Jeff Reardon. There we go. Look at that beard. Look at that hat. Love the hat. Uh, Red Sox and Dodgers. Um, can't do Ricky Henderson. Ooh, how about... I mean, we could do an, an older player pretty easily here, but what about Carl Crawford? He went from Tampa to Boston on that huge free agent contract and was a bust, and then I believe he finished in L.A. You can do Manny as well, but I think everybody's going to do Manny. We're going to do Carl Crawford. Good one. Uh, 300 season for the Red Sox. If you don't put... Uh, Ted Williams here. I don't know what's wrong with you, but I'm going to guess a lot of people are probably going to put Poppy. Um, who else could we put there just for fun? Uh, Wade Boggs. Oh, we got to do Wade Boggs. Uh, Wade Boggs also was in... It was I don't think Boggsy... Bogsy wasn't in The Simpsons, but Bogsy was in plenty of stuff, so we're going to go Wade Boggs. R.I.P. Wade Boggs. Uh, all right, so we got two left here with the Angels and the Expos and the Angels and the 300 season. Hold on one second here. Give me two seconds. All right, uh, let's see, Expos and Angels. Why am I having such a hard time with, oh, God, I think I'm trying to think of, I'm trying to think of second baseman still. All right, so just anybody. So you got Vlad Sr. is probably the easiest one. Um, let's see, let's just name some old Expos and see if they ever played for the Angels. Uh, obviously, uh, well, we already used Rock. He didn't. Uh, Andre Dawson, no. Um, Tim Wallach, I don't think so. Pedro, yeah, we already did that. Gary Carter did not play on the Angels. Um, Bryn Smith, when you mention the Expos, you have to mention Bryn Smith. Floyd Yeomans, <laughs> I don't think they play. They maybe did. Uh, oh, Okay, well, let's go with the Expos, and let's go this. I mean, he's the answer for a lot of things, but Bartolo Colon. All right, so we just got one left. 300 season with the Angels. Uh, Hall of Famer Rod Carew. I, I don't think Mo Vaughn ever hit 300 for the Angels. Um, I, got, I got your answer. I got your answer. Also, pop culture, he was kit, hit or die, somebody or other in Angels in the Outfield. He is my favorite third baseman of all time. Oh, geez. Did Carney Lansford, did he win? Did he win that batting title in Boston or in California? I don't know. Ooh, I don't know, and I don't want to risk it. I don't want to risk it. I want to look it up when we're done. But I don't want to risk it. Uh, I mean, you could put in Mike Trout. Um, did Lyman Bostic ever... Did he hit that well? Uh, I don't know. Dave Henderson, I don't think, hit that well. Um... J.T. Snow, Tim Salmon. I bet you they all had Darren Erstad. I bet you they all had 300 seasons, but I don't know for sure. Um, who, was the, who was the last batting champ for the Angels? 
uh, I mean, Rod Carew. Let's just put Rod Carew. Yeah, we'll just do Rod Carew because we don't want these streams to be very long. All right, a score of 53. What did he end up with? 15, so not, not great. Uh, average score is only seven, so we did better than that. Uh, my goal is also to never have the most popular answer. In, in, in Oh, and Steve Sachs was legit the number one answer for first base at the Dodgers? Wow. Ted Williams, like I said, he was going to be number one. Uh, Mike Trout was, wow, by far number one. Uh, Altuve, Trey Turner. See, it's uh, most of these are going to be pretty uh, new, you know, newer players. Now, I wanted to see, I want to see Carney Lansford. Let's just see with the Angels. What did Carew do? Um, didn't win the batting. I don't know why I did that. Didn't win the batting title, but he hit three. <laughs> wow, guy, three twenty-eight. All right. Um, I tend to think it might have been with the Red Sox he won the batting title. Yeah. Oh, we would have, see, we would have lost there. He hit 294, 287, and 261. Came in third in Rookie of the Year in 78 behind Lou Whitaker and Paul Molitor. Wow. And Alan Tramp. Who was Rich Gale? I've never heard of Rich Gale. Oh, he had a pretty good rookie season. And then never did anything after that. But you know what? He played in the big leagues for seven years. So, And then it looks like he probably went to Japan. Oh, he played two whole seasons in Hanshin. Which is something we've learned is a rarity. Most people when they go to Japan especially back in the day, couldn't even get through a season. They would just couldn't deal with being there. Now I think it's pretty a lot easier. But 13 and 8 and then 5 and 10. Not great. Wow, not great numbers. But, um, wow, well, okay. All right, so that's it. Uh, that's all we're going to do. Um, and that's what we, all that's going to happen here. We'll do this a couple times a week, maybe two maybe three times a week we'll see uh I'll, these will also get uploaded on youtube so if you can't make a stream no biggie just watch it on youtube um also over on youtube we've got uh i'm putting new videos up as i create them i put one up about ellie de la cruz last week um that was a real fun one to make and then uh if you go look at our shorts sorry i just shook the camera there if you go look at our shorts uh, I'm starting to do those every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. There will be a new Guess That Classic baseball card. Should be pretty easy if you collected cards, especially in the junk wax era. But uh, go check that out as well. Uh, those are just minute-long things, so very easy to do. But uh, that's it. We will, um, I don't know, maybe Friday we'll do this again. Uh, Pod will also come out on Friday. Hopefully we'll record it uh, tomorrow. So maybe we'll do this on Thursday or Friday. I don't know. We'll see probably one more time this week. Uh, see if baseball season ends today, tonight. And uh, I kind of hope it doesn't. But all right, that's it. We'll uh, see you again on the next stream. Peace.